Hey everyone, this is Nikki from Happily Lost. Today we're going to go through five commonly asked questions about candles. Starting with what to do before using a candle. Then what does a sooty candle flame mean? My candle is this flame is spitting and flickering. What to do if the candle keeps going out? And what is the difference between beeswax, soy wax and paraffin wax? But before we get into that, I would remind everyone of my um, other YouTube content where I get into motorcycles, art and sex related stuff. If you like this content, then please select the subscribe button and press the bell to be notified of any updates. Don't forget my Facebook page, my Instagram and I have a Patreon now if you would like to support this and other content. So you have bought a candle and now you would like to burn it. So now what? Well, firstly, if it is a pillar candle, like this, you will need to remove all the packaging around it and labels. Uh, there will be, well, we at Happily Lost will have two labels on our pillar candles, uh, one on the side and one underneath. Uh, these will need to be removed. Um, if it is a container candle, like one of these, um, it will also have a label on the side and one on the back and you will also need to remove those labels. Okay, secondly, you may need to trim the wick. Uh, when happily lost sales candles, we generally have the wick longer than what is required. Um, at the moment, I haven't actually trimmed this one to be sold, so we'll do that right now. The wick length. Uh, which is required for adequate burning, uh, which is the visible wick length, needs to be about um, five millimeters in length. Um, when we sell a candle, we normally have the wick a lot longer, then you need to trim the candle wick. All you do, so we would normally sell a candle about that length, the wick, and so what you will need to do is trim it to about 5mm, just using a pair of scissors, just like yours, probably about, about that. And that would be an ideal length to start burning the candle. As I mentioned before, there are two labels on our candles. The label on the side tells you what the candle is, and the label on the bottom is the warning label. So what does the warning label have on it? Generally, the warning label will indicate the following. Never leave a burning candle unattended. Burn candles out of reach of children and pets. Always leave at least 10 centimeters between burning candles. Do not burn candles on or near anything flammable. Our warning labels also includes other information like keep the wax pool free of debris, Avoid exposure to drafts and direct sunlight. Always place candle on a stable level and heat resistant surface. Observe caution as candle holder may get hot. Always keep wicks centered and trimmed to no more than five millimeters. And do not burn for candles for more than four hours at a time, which helps keep the container cooler. The next question is about a sooty candle. A sooty candle or sooty candle flame is an indication that the candle is not burning correctly. It is not burning the wax efficiently. This could be due to variations in the wax, incorrect wick size, which is different to um, wick length, or a clogged wick. It can also be caused by additives in the wax, for example, fragrances and dyes. Here at Happy Loss, we regularly test our candles for burning quality and wick size. And we try to minimize additives in the wax to get a clean burn. However, sometimes it still occurs. It is, it is normal for a little bit of soot to occur, um, especially as the candle gets lower as the candle gets lower, the airflow around it changes, the burn efficiency to be different. 
and as a result there's a possibility of increased soot. One of the main things which you as a consumer can do to try and prevent this, keep the wick trimmed to approximately five millimetres. If a mushroom shape forms on the end of the wick, remove it before the next time you burn the candle. This particular candle has a little bit of, of mushrooming on it. Um, the candle is actually burning sufficiently, it is just something to do with that particular wick. Uh, you can tell it's burning efficiently because it is burning majority of the wax around the cup. If a mushroom shape forms on the end of the wick, remove it for the next time you burn the candle. Mushrooming can alter the burn rate and efficiency of the candle. If it is a pillar candle and it has excess wax walls around the wick, which is known as tunneling, remove some of the walls so that enough air can reach the wick. However, make sure to leave a little bit of the wall so that the wax does not run down the sides and away from the wick. The next question is about the candle flame spitting and flickering. Flame spitting, spitting and flickering can be caused by impurities in the wick and if there is a draft where the candles are placed. Each wick is different and can come from a different product production batch. From time to time wicks can collect impurities from the manufacturing of the wick and the handling. As a result, the wick may produce spitting and flickering flame, which is normal. This is more likely to occur with happily lost square braid wicks, as they are not primed for the burn prior to us getting it and using them in our candles. We go through a process of dipping those particular wicks in the wax that is going to be used for the candle, but during this priming, Deposits can build up on the wick uh, from hands or anything else that's around. Another cause for flickering flame is if the candle is in a draft. If you see the candle fl flame flickering, try moving it to a different location. A flickering flame can change the burn rate and therefore the efficiency of the candle. Consequently, it may produce additional so soot. The next question is about what to do if the candle keeps going out. If your candle keeps going out, it could be an indication that the candle has the wrong size wick in it. That the wick length is too short or it is in a breezy area and has been blown out. So what, to do, what can you do about it? Well, we at Happy Lost do our best to make sure that the correct wick size is used every time. We regularly test the candles to make sure that we are using the correct size. However, variations in the wax, the wick and additives may mean that there are changes which are not picked up before going out to the customer. If you suspect the candle has the wrong wick size, we are happy to check and if need be, replace. Please see our refund and exchange policy. If the wick length is too short, the flame will not be able to burn enough wax and the melted wax will drown the flame. In this case, either tip out some of the melted wax or remove some of the solid wax around the wick to effectively make the exposed wick longer. You may need to remove the wax to the edges of the candle to accomplish this. If the issue is due to a breezy area, just simply try moving the candle to a different location. This last question is about what is beeswax, soy wax and paraffin wax. Beeswax is a natural substance secreted from the worker honeybees from glands under the underside of their adamants. This secreted substance is known as beeswax scale. Bees feed on the honey to produce beeswax scales. 
While secreting the wax, bees do not do any other work in their hive. The bees use the secreted wax to assemble honeycomb. The honeycomb is used to house the bees' larvae and as a storage for the honey and pollen. The other wax that we tend to use here is soy wax. Soy wax is vegetable-based wax which is produced from the oil of soybeans. After harvesting, the beans are cleaned, cracked, deholed, and rolled into flakes. The oil is then extracted from the flakes and hydrogenated. The hydrogenation process converts some of the fatty acids into the, in the oil from unsaturated to saturated. This process dramatically alters the melting point of the oil, making it a solid at room temperature. The last wax, wax is paraffin wax, which we do not use here. Paraffin wax is a petroleum wax and is a soft colourless wax derived from pet, petrol, coal and shale oil. The first step in the making paraffin wax is to remove the oil from the shellac wax. This is done by a process of crystallisation. It is heated and mixed with one or more solvents and then cooled. As it cools, wax crystallises out of the solution leaving only oil. This mixture is filtered into solid, which is wax, and liquid. The resultant can then be further processed to remove colours and odours. The wax may finally be blended to give certain properties such as melt, changing the melt point and the penetration. So that is it, five questions on wax and candles. So I'll see you next time. Bye.